Ahoy hoy, I'm Planet Walk, and one of the difficulties that I have with debunking pseudoscience and misinformation is that there are a lot of people out there who will dismiss what I have to say because they are under the impression that I believe in some pseudoscience. Now in general this doesn't seem to be because of any of the actual arguments that I've made, but instead because I am trans. Which seems to suggest that there are people that think that trans people are pseudoscientific, so are we? Now I will say that it is very difficult for me to understand how being trans, just simply being trans would make you anti-science in any way, given the fact that we use the advances of science to change ourselves. For example, something like HRT is the result of science, and whilst it may not have been specifically created for trans people, the guidelines around trans people taking it were. Like for example, if I'm taking pills, I might need to take a testosterone blocker as well, because otherwise the pills won't be nearly as effective. But of course, when we're talking about trans people being anti-scientific, then that is not what we're talking about. Flat Earthers, after all, do use GPS without any complaints, even though it requires the Earth to be a globe in order to work. There are differences, of course, but it would be very hard to talk about any of those differences without actually addressing any of the arguments as to why people think that trans people are anti-science. And I think the main reason for this is because trans women will say that they're women, trans men will say that they're men, and non-binary people will say that they're non-binary. But there are many people who believe that if you're born female, then you will grow up to be a woman. If you're born male, then you will grow up to be a man. If you disagree with that, they think that you're anti-science. But the problem is, whilst this argument may sound like it's based completely on science, it isn't actually. It really comes down to definitions. You see, when it comes to definitions, those aren't given to us by science. They can be guided by science, but what we decide a word means is what it means. And quite often, people will also have disagreements over what words mean. If you ask some random person what a theory is, they might just say, oh well, it's just a guess. But if you ask a science-minded person what a theory is, then they might say, well, it's an explanation for something based on the facts of the matter. Now, some people might be tempted to say, well, if you say that a theory is just a guess, then you're wrong, you're being anti-science. But that is the way that some people use the word theory. Especially in social situations, they might say, I have a theory about something, when in reality it's just a guess that they've got. Now, if someone were to try and dismiss gravity or evolution by saying, well, it's just a theory, which means that it's just a guess, then that would be anti-science. That is because the definition for the word theory here does not accurately describe what is being talked about. Evolution and gravity aren't just guesses. So when it comes to someone that says if you're born a male then you'll grow up to be a man, they're using different definitions to a trans woman who says that she's a woman. Because the definition for woman that the former would be using would be something along the lines of an adult human of the sex that produces large gametes. Whereas the definition of woman that the latter would be using would be something along the lines of an individual who has a gender identity typically associated with femininity or the female sex. Now if we use that definition, then you can absolutely be born male and grow up to be a woman. There is no contradiction there. There is nothing anti-science about saying that if you're born male, then you can grow up to have a gender identity typically associated with femininity or the female sex. There's nothing wrong with that. But some people might take issue with that because they think that there's no such thing as gender identity and claim that gender identity is just made up and anti-science. The problem with claiming that though is that the scientific view on gender identity is that it's a very real thing. In fact, the DSM-4's version of gender dysphoria was called gender identity disorder. Now, of course, there are some problems with the DSM-4, hence why it was changed in the DSM-5. But it just goes to show that gender identity is something that has been known about for ages. It's not just some new invention. And also, I do need to acknowledge that, yes, the DSM-5 does talk about gender identity. You want to know what else talks about gender identity? The DSM-3. Yeah, this goes back a long ways. Now, I couldn't find any mention of gender identity in the DSM-1 or 2, but there was also something else that I couldn't find in the DSM-1 or 2 that appeared in the DSM-3. I'll mention that in a little bit. But my point is that gender identity is something that has been known about for a while. There have been plenty of studies on it. There are even some examples that I can bring up, like the case of Amanda Burns after filming She's the Man. If gender identity weren't a thing, then why would she get gender dysphoria from presenting as a guy? 
Ultimately, I think the denial of gender identity comes down to people who have never really had to think about their own gender identity. And when you don't have to think about it, it's very easy to assume that it doesn't exist. But here's the thing, your own experiences alone do not paint a complete picture of what the human experience is like for everyone. To paint a parallel here, it'd be very easy for a straight person to say, well, sexual orientation isn't actually a thing, because they've never really had to think about their sexual orientation, and the reason is because it's generally seen as the default. Whereas in reality, sexual orientation has been known about for a long time. Fun fact, sexual orientation was not mentioned in the DSM 1 and 2, but like gender identity, was mentioned in the DSM 3. To claim that gender identity is not a thing is to go against the science, and if you're trying to make the point that trans people are anti-science, then it's a good idea to not be anti-science yourself. Another thing that I've heard a lot of that could be the reason why people think that trans people are anti-science is, you can't change your sex. And in hindsight, I probably should have started with that one. But there are two parts to this. The first is to recognize that sex and gender are two different but related things that can each be broken down into their own subcategories. The difference between the two is that sex is about the biological characteristics of somebody, whereas gender is about the social and cultural characteristics and expectations of somebody usually related to their sex. It is important to acknowledge these differences because the main thing that trans people are generally trying to change about themselves is not their sex, but instead their gender. It's also important to note that when I talk about people changing their gender, I'm talking about the gender roles that they occupy and their gender expression, not so much about their gender identity. Now there are some people that will say, no, sex and gender are the same, you can't change that, I refuse to bow down to the changing of definitions by gender ideology. But the problem with saying that is that you're then not actually dealing with the actual claims being made. It's saying that evolution is just a theory, so therefore it's just a guess, all over again. Now there will be some people that will say, well I've seen trans people claim that they have changed their sex, not just their gender. And that is true, there are trans people that do claim that. But it's important to ask, what do they mean by sex, because, and this is gonna shock you, some people mean different things by sex. For example, a lot of people when they talk about sex, they are meaning your sex chromosomes. Do you have XX or do you have XY? Or do you have XXY? Some people might be talking about gametes. Do you have small gametes or do you have large gametes? And if you say neither, then they'll ask, okay, which gamete does your biology most closely relate to? Now that one is a rather interesting one because it does result in a sex binary and there are a lot of science-minded people that use it. However, that binary to me feels rather forced. And the reason for that is because there are people that do not produce gametes, and rather than going, okay, well that can have its own category, it goes, nope, that doesn't get its own category, we're going to look at a different thing to decide their sex, and make sure it's still male or female. Anyway, when trans people say that they have changed their sex, I would hazard a guess that they're not talking about either of those definitions of sex. Instead, they're most likely talking about sex as a broad category that has different aspects to it, like hormones for example. You can change your hormone profile. It is also possible to change your genitals, which can be considered another aspect of sex. So when trans people say that they have changed their sex, it's most likely that that is what they're talking about. There might be some trans people that will claim that they've changed their chromosomes, but likely not many of them. Most of us don't care what our chromosomes are, to be honest. Now there is another argument that I hear a lot of, and when directed at me, it usually goes something along the lines of, you have an untreated mental illness that you need to get sorted out, rather than pushing it on to everyone else. And you know what? I actually kind of agree with that. I don't really like calling it a mental illness due to how much stigma that term has, but do I have a mental condition that I need to sort out? Yeah, absolutely. It's called ADHD. Now obviously, people aren't talking about ADHD when they say that I have a mental illness that I have to sort out. They're talking about me being trans. And that is what I'd have to disagree with, because being trans itself is not a mental disorder or mental illness. You can maybe argue that gender dysphoria is, but you could also argue that gender dysphoria more leads to mental illness if left untreated. And the only treatment that has been shown to be effective for gender dysphoria is transitioning. Some people might say, well, you need therapy instead. But here's the thing, 
there is no evidence that therapy alone can be an effective treatment for that. Now, I'm not saying that therapy can't help, but it needs to be used with gender-affirming care. So yeah, being trans is not a mental illness. I know that it used to be labelled as a mental illness in the DSM, but so did being gay right next to being trans. But on the mental illness note, there are a lot of people that say that trans people are delusional about their own sex or their biology. And the thing is, I think trans people are well aware of their own biology. Like, why would trans people try so hard to change their own biology if they were delusional about it? They are aware of their biology and want to change that fact. Now, I think that's pretty much all the arguments people have as to why trans people are inherently anti-science. Of course, there are other arguments people make as to why trans people are anti-science, but usually that comes down to views that many trans people hold, like trans kids or trans women in sports. Just because someone is trans, that doesn't necessarily mean that they think that trans women should be competing in the women's category in sports. But to talk about trans women in sports very briefly, I feel like that could be its own completely separate video. I do feel like that discussion suffers from many of the problems that we've talked about today. A lot of the framing is men shouldn't compete in women's sports because men are stronger than women. Yet, we're not talking about men competing in women's sports. I don't think anyone is arguing for that. They're arguing for trans women competing in women's sports. I get that most of the time when people make that argument, they are including trans women in the category of men. But when people say that trans women should be able to compete in women's sports, they are specifically talking about trans women, not men. It'd be kind of like if in a school there was an exam and students were allowed to take a calculator into that exam. But there was a big uproar about it because people were saying they're allowing students to take computers into that exam. That is clearly cheating. You can try to argue that a calculator is a type of computer, but let's not pretend that using the term computer is in any way an accurate way of framing that. But as I said earlier, you could make an entire video about whether students should be able to use calculators for an exam. So that's as in-depth as I'm going to go for this video. However, if you want a video on that subject, let me know. So ultimately, when people say that trans people are anti-science, I think that they just don't have an understanding of why trans people say the things that they do. A lot of it seems to be, well, because trans people don't use this word the way that I do, then they must be anti-science, which is also a misunderstanding of what actually constitutes science. Of course, I do think that part of the reason for this misunderstanding is because a lot of people out there will say, oh, well, this is what trans people say, look how stupid it is, without exploring any of the reasoning trans people have or exploring any of the nuance behind what they're saying. After all, many of the discussions about trans people are discussions about trans people, not discussions with trans people. So my suggestion is this. If you think that trans people are anti-science, then just have a discussion with a trans person you'll probably find that they are far less anti-science than you might think. But anyway, that is it for this video. Leave a like and subscribe if you liked that video. Do you think this video needs a follow-up? Let me know in the comments. I will see you in the next video. Between you and me, thank you for watching.